What's going on, Nittany Nation? Welcome to the Penn State Rivals YouTube channel. I am your host, Josh Taylor, and on this episode, I'm going to be talking about the biggest matchup this weekend, not only in the Big Ten, but the biggest game for Penn State this season. It's number five, Michigan, and number 10, Penn State. So Penn State's traveling to Ann Arbor to take on the Wolverines, the Battle of the Unbeatens. This is really the first big-time test for both of these teams. Michigan really hasn't played anyone um, this season. You know, beat Iowa, looked okay in the first half against Indiana, and it kind of blew them out in the second half. And if you're Penn State, you've kind of been through it all so far this season. You know, starting um, your season on the road, hostile environment, the blackout at Purdue, night game, one of the first games of the season. And then you also travel to Auburn, Jordan-Hare Stadium. We know how crazy that is. Really just kind of have your way with that Auburn team. And, you know, they're not the best team this year. They're not the Auburn of the past, but still, that place is insane. Taking over that stadium was huge. And I already know that Penn State fans are going to travel to Michigan um, this weekend. But you also had your ugly uh, win over Northwestern in the rain that monsoon. I mean, I was there. It wasn't pretty. All the turnovers you overcame, but you still won. You always get that ugly game, whether it was the Illinois um, the game from last year. But there's just you. I, there's just always those ugly wins that you kind of have to come back from. So I feel like you learn a lot from those. Obviously, you have that bye week last week to kind of prepare for this game for Michigan. Like I said, they played Indiana. For them, it was just survive. Don't look past them. You know, don't look ahead to Penn State. But Michigan right now is seven point favorites. The over under is fifty one and a half. I think it's a lot for the over under to be honest with you, just because I feel like this is two really good defenses. And if you take the quarterbacks off of both of these teams, I feel like these teams are actually pretty similar in a lot of ways. Um, but Penn State's defense actually leads the nation in pass breakups right now. Um, Joey Porter Jr. is first in the nation as well. And they force a turnover on a staggering 28% of their opponent's possessions. Not just a stop. I'm not saying they don't allow them to score on 20 uh, uh percent of their possessions they they force a turnover on 28 percent of their possessions that's insane i wasn't expecting that at all and they also have a stop rate of not allowing their opponents to score on a possession of 81.2 percent so they're up there I, I would say they're comfortably a top 10 defense in all of college football you know especially when it comes to pass breakups and turnovers and such but michigan's a top three defense you know the whole Big Ten is low with defenses, but Michigan is up there as well. Uh, but Penn State's defense allows only 14.8 points per game, 79.8 yards rushing, which obviously is the big one this weekend with Blake Corum. They held Tank Bigsby to 39 yards um, on the ground, and Northwestern as a total had 31 rushing yards on 28 carries. And they're a run-heavy team. They did not want Holinsky to throw the ball. They saw what happened when he did. Um, and they do allow 262 passing yards per game. But you have to remember, Aiden O'Connell, like even looking back now, we knew what Aiden O'Connell was going to be and how he's performed against other teams, Syracuse, Minnesota, and such. He had 365 yards against Penn State. So that right there is going to set the <laughs> average well above uh, what the other games have really looked like. But that was the area attack that you were going to face all season long. They hold their uh, opponent's quarterbacks to only a 49.6 completion percentage. And J.J. McCarthy actually has the highest completion percentage in all of uh, D1 football. So it seems like something has to really give in this game. But like I said, Michigan's defense is right there with Penn State's. Uh, Penn State's defense is just legit. They got 22 sacks compared to Penn State's 13. So they got more sacks. Um, and both O-lines have been great. When you look at it, that was the big question mark for Penn State coming into this season was why didn't the run game get going last year? Sean Clifford was running too much, you know, didn't get comfortable um, in that pocket. So the offensive line, that's been the biggest question mark coming into the season. I saw the comments on all the videos. What's the offensive line looking like and such? So that's been the biggest thing. You know, they change personnel, strength conditioning coach. They rotate some guys around. They bring some transfers in. The offensive line looks great. You've got guys projected to get drafted this year, much higher than it would have been uh, last year already. But still, Clifford and McCarthy both have only been sacked four times each. That's great if you're a Penn State fan. Michigan, you're used to that. Michigan's got the best offensive line in the whole country. 
Penn State, like I said, that was their weak point coming into the season. So they needed to get that going. Michigan allows only 11.3 points per game, 165 yards passing per game, and 81 yards on the ground. So, like I said, you're not going to get much done on their defense. The thing that worries me about them is that, of course, they haven't you know played anyone yet. They started out with UConn and Hawaii. Like I said, they had their impressive win against uh, Iowa and then Indiana last week as well. But still, something has to give in the run game for both of these teams. You have Blake Quorum. Then you have the duo of Nicholas Singleton and Katron Allen. And that's my question, really, is would you rather have one dominant running back in a Blake Quorum who has 118 rushes for 735 yards and 11 touchdowns, or do you want a duo like Nicholas Singleton and Katron Allen who you rotate in, you got the fresh legs, whoever's hot, you just keep feeding them the ball. They have a combined 120 carries for 766 yards and eight touchdowns. So pretty much similar to what Blake Quorum's done by himself. And we know that J.J. McCarthy has some wheels. He can run it. And we've seen Sean Clifford do the same thing. Um, Ill-advised run sometimes like that one against Auburn where he got laid out. But then also in the goal line situations, he's stuffing his nose in there. He's, you know, getting in there and getting those, those touchdowns that you need. So the only thing for me is this is J.J. McCarthy's first big-time test. He's only had one game where he really had to throw it. And that was against Maryland. And he went 18 for 26, 220 yards, two touchdowns, and no interceptions. And the first half of Indiana was kind of the, – the whole offense was kind of sluggish at the time. The game was close much longer than it should have been. Then that second half, they got things going and closed it away. So my thing is, how confident are you in a young quarterback in his first big-time game? And I know they're playing at home. I, you know, of course, if this was at Penn State, I feel like it would be a different story. But how comfortable are you with that guy? You know, you had – Cade McNamara, who really went through that gauntlet last year, beat Ohio State, took them to the Big Ten Championship, won the Big Ten Championship, and then got to the playoffs. That, for me, is where you wish J.J. McCarthy had that in-game experience. So when he faces adversity, which he really hasn't faced this season, how's he going to bounce back? For me, I see Sean Clifford. The dude, he loves it. You saw when they got to Auburn, that guy was just as calm, cool, and collected as could be, as crazy as that place was, even though Penn State fans took it over. Like I said, I've as a lifelong Alabama fan, I've seen a lot of dark things happen at Jordan Hare Stadium. It's not easy to go into that stadium, be just calm, cool, and collected the whole time, and just do what you're supposed to do. And we saw him face adversity in that Purdue game. He throws that pick six. And, I mean, you felt it, just the whole – Energy out of the game was just sucked away after that pick six. You're like, that's it. Penn State's going to lose this. They're done. And then you saw him come back, not even just, you know, throughout the game, but that especially that last game-winning drive where he was forced to throw the ball. You know, dink and dunks. He had some big plays that left uh, pass um, to Mitch Tinsley and then Tyler Warren and then finding Kevon Lee. It's just you, you saw him overcome that, and that's what you want. This is his last year. He has nothing to lose. He's just playing all out this year, and that's what I love. I love just a confident Sean Clifford who's going to go out there. I think talent-wise, obviously, J.J. McCarthy is you know the coveted quarterback of the future for Michigan, kind of like Drew Allar is for Penn State. But for me, it's who can lead their team to win, and when they have to throw the ball, they can do it effectively, and they aren't going to make mistakes. J.J. McCarthy, like I said, 78.3 completion percentage, which is bonkers, 1,152 yards, nine touchdowns, and only one interception, which was last week. Clifford has only gotten those two interceptions. They both have nine touchdowns, similar in yardage. Uh, Clifford's completion percentage is only 62%, but still not bad. Um, the thing is, both teams want to run the ball. They want to get the running game going. You know Blake Corn wants to be the hot hand. You know Michigan's going to have seven on the line. <laughs> you just have to be physical with them. Like I said, they got the best offensive line in all of college football, and I don't think it's close either. I think they have a dominant offensive line. So for me, if you're P.J. Mustafer, Chop Robinson, Adisa Isaac, even those guys in that second level with Abdul Carter, Curtis Jacobs, um, Sutherland, it's just you have to be able to not let Blake Corum get that one that just goes 30, 40 yards on you. You can't let them get these home run plays that add up, and they just kind of – Keep the game going, control the clock, you know, time of possession. That's Michigan's game. Great, feisty defense that loves getting after the quarterback and they can cause some turnovers themselves. Um, but they want to run the ball on you. And I, 
I think Penn State has to force J.J. McCarthy to throw it. Um, and outside of Bell, they have Shoemaker, who's a great tight end. I just don't think they have the offensive weapons that are good enough to keep up with uh, Zaki Wheatley, Joey Porter Jr., Zaire Brown in the back, both, you know, Caleb and Kobe King. Like I said, these linebackers, I don't think J.J. McCarthy – has enough in him. It's hard picking against Michigan, and I'm not being biased at all in this prediction. It's just when I see the matchup and what has to happen for both of these teams to win, I like Penn State's chances to run the ball and get things going and be able to spread out some of these smart pass plays because Sean Clifford has the experience. I tell people all the time when it comes to the NFL draft, getting a guy like Trey Lance, for example, you can't just create reps or in-game experience. You can't just make that up and say, oh, here it is, quarterback. He has to go through the ups and the downs, the roller coasters, the interceptions, the fumbles, the big-time touchdowns. You have to just live it. You have to do it. It's like going to the gym. You can't just grow muscles. Like You have to go to the gym and work on it, and every single rep adds up. And that's just something you can't give your quarterback. So for me, J.J. McCarthy has not seen a defense like this. And obviously Penn State hasn't seen defense like this since last year. Um, but we've seen Penn State, you know, be able to keep up with the Michigan um, team. And I, I just think when it comes down to it, I don't think they're like Auburn, but in a way kind of the same blueprint. They want to run the ball on you. They wanted to play a physical defense. Like I said, Auburn's nowhere near as good as Michigan, obviously. Um, but I just think that Penn State can – Somewhat, you're not going to stop Blake Corum. You need to contain Blake Corum, not let him control the game and have those two, three touchdown games. Because if so, Penn State does not have a chance in this one unless Sean Clifford just goes lights out, which I don't see happening against this Michigan team. Like stats-wise, this can be an ugly game where Clifford is like 60, maybe high 50% completions, um, maybe two touchdowns and two interceptions, or maybe just one. But this, is, this isn't going to be a game where he's just, you know, slinging it around there. It needs to be precise plays on offense that are set up because of the run game. So I'm looking at guys like Britton Strange, who's been the reliable guy at tight end, who whether it's right before halftime of Purdue or it's in that Northwestern game that we saw two weeks ago where it's just a touchdown was needed, and he's the guy. He's the guy who's jumping over people. He's the physical guy getting downfield. But then also just open things up with, Parker Washington and Mitchell Tennessee on the outside. I like those matchups as well. When it comes down to one-on-one -on -one matchups, I like Penn State's defense being able to stop Michigan's offense, like I said, with Bell, Shoemaker, and their offense, compared to what Michigan's defense is going to be able to do against Britton Strange, uh, Parker Washington, Mitch Tinsley, and uh, Lambert Smith coming back as well. He was at practice. He looks good. He looks fine. Expected to play. That's big. That's your third wide receiver. So you have depth. You can spread things out. You're not asking for a young guy to come in. So all these guys are experienced. You know, obviously the running game, those are your freshmen, but they look like vets. They're playing like vets. Um, so Penn State's defense has 11 turnovers on the season, while Michigan has only forced five against lesser opponents. And two of them were those interceptions against Maryland that were very questionable, very well could have been reviewed. At least one of them wasn't called. That first one was not an interception. Second one probably could have been as well. But for me, just force J.J. McCarthy to have to be the hero. Make him like, earn the, those reps and say, you know, Michigan, like you replaced the reliable guy who didn't turn the ball over in K. McNamara. Just because you know the upside of J.J. McCarthy, and that's fine. I don't blame you. You start him in the beginning of the season like you did. You roll with him. You let him get that experience in these kind of games. But maybe it's just too early for him to play a team like Penn State, who, like I said, 11 turnovers. And that's 28% of drives where they are causing a turnover. So for me, I think Penn State does enough. You're not going to stop Blake Corum. You're going to slow him down. And they're going to make J.J. McCarthy throw the ball. And he's going to make mistakes. I think both quarterbacks make mistakes just because this defense is that good. Uh, I think Penn State has right at 110 yards rushing. I think Nicholas Singleton and Catron Allen both have a touchdown. And I think the reliable Britton Strange has one as well. I've got it Penn State 24, Michigan 20. So I think those three touchdowns are Britton Strange, Catron Allen, and uh, Nicholas Singleton. I think Joey Porter Jr. gets an interception. J.J. McCarthy is going to be looking at Ronnie Bell on the outside there. Like that is my go-to target. 
and that's where Joey Porter Jr. is going to be locked down um, on that outside there to contain him. But then, you, like I said, you, you see the help that comes with it. It's not just him. You, he's got to be able to spread the ball out on that offense, and I just don't see him being able to. So let me know what y'all think. Drop your predictions in the comments, Michigan fans. I'm sorry. I'm not just saying this because this is the Penn State channel. I genuinely think the matchup – I think seven points is too much, by the way, for Michigan. So regardless, I'd bet plus seven on Penn State. The under, I, I'm definitely going with. I think like I said, I got it right at 44. I think 51 and a half is too much unless there's like a defensive touchdown that really tips it over that um, point of close to 51 and some change. But let me know what you think. I, I think matchup wise, it's just a, a bad formula for Michigan of how they need to win this game going against what Penn State can do on, on defense. I think, you know, they're susceptible to some runs by Blake Corum. But I think I saw enough in that Auburn game that ran it with, you know, both quarterbacks and Tank Bigsby, and they got a depth of running backs. And then with the Northwestern game, who, you know, is heavy with uh, Cam uh, Porter and uh, Evan Hull, especially in that, that rain, they didn't want to pass the ball. I saw a good bit enough to be like, okay, like I said, they're not going to stop Blake Corn, but I think they will do enough to where J.J. McCarthy on third down has to throw the ball and he's going to make mistakes. It's, it's ha it happens. He's young. Like I said, you can't make up that experience. So let me know what y'all think. Appreciate y'all checking out the video. Subscribe to the channel. Got great content coming to the uh, channel here for Penn State Rivals. And I'll catch y'all after the game to talk about if I was right or if I was wrong. So like I said, drop your comments so we can come back to it and uh, see what went on in this game. See y'all later.